Hey, this is Ralph, and in this video, I want to take a little break from my Buckets Retirement Plan calculator and just kind of prettify, make uh, make this spreadsheet a little bit more attractive. So before I turned on the recorder, you can see I already did a few things just, you know, with some font sizes and some fill colors, shading, and I've got some borders all over the place. So nothing too tricky there. Ooh, I do want you to remember that Alt-Enter is the keyboard shortcut for creating a line break. So if I had some content in a particular cell, rolling five year, um, Alt-Enter will take me to a new line within that cell, and then I can put in average returns. And then we just have standard stuff. Now you notice I've got these little green tabs next to many of my cells. That's just Excel trying to caution me that the formula or function used in this cell is a little bit different than the one next to it. So it's trying to just make sure I did that intentionally. I did so and simply choose to click this little cautionary flag here. Ignore error and that'll get rid of that. Oh, I should do this one too. There we go. Just select them. Click that caution flag and ignore error. Okay, so now we've got this data, it looks pretty good. However, I wanna do one more thing with some conditional formatting that I think will really help this data pop to us. So again, we're looking at annual S&P 500 returns from 1928 all the way down to 2020. Then we have a rolling five-year average and a rolling 10-year average of those returns so that we can compare the variabilities and the min maxes and things like that of these various groupings of historical stock returns. I'm going to go ahead and select all of my return data here. Conditional formatting, and I'm going to jump over to color scales. Color scales is kind of neat. And they've got a few options in here, so we can do some like some some greens and reds. That looks kind of neat, and that's probably going to be a good one to go for. So, yeah, I'm going to choose this one here. It's the green, white, red color scale, but we're gonna tweak it a little bit to make sure it fits with what our data is showing. All right, so I've got that selected. And you can see what it did is it colored really big returns, like 50% return in 1954. Um, that's a got a dark green versus, let's go back to the Great Depression there, 1931, negative 43% is a dark red. However, it's a little bit misleading because if I look at my rolling 10-year averages, We've got some great return years, 20, 21, 20, and things like that. And then we even have some pretty decent returns like 6%, 7%, 8%, and 10%, which have a kind of a reddish tint. So we need to enhance it. So my selected range is still selected. My range is still selected. I'm gonna go back into conditional formatting, manage rules, and I've only got one rule there. That's the one that I applied to that data set. And I'm going to edit that rule. And I can see my minimums, my midpoints and my maximum. This is where you can change the colors around too. So if you have a color blindness that affects you seeing reds and greens, this would be a great opportunity to change that. I'm gonna change these. Instead of lowest value, I'm gonna change these out to number. Midpoint is gonna be a number. Maximum is gonna be a number. So instead of using percentages or instead of using percentiles, I'm gonna use numbers. Now my minimum number is gonna be a negative 0.2 or negative 20%. My midpoint, I'll keep that at zero, and my maximum, I'm gonna do that as a positive 0.2, positive 20%. Granted, I'm gonna have some values that are lower than negative two or negative 0.2, negative 20%. I'm mean, gonna have a couple values that are higher than a positive 20%, but these are the extremes that I wanna look at, and those higher numbers are also gonna be red or green. Okay, so I feel pretty good about that. Let me click OK, and I'll click OK. And now if we look at our data, we can see very clearly that, yeah, we're, we've got green values, those are gonna be the, the good positive return years and things like that. Now, what I wanna do, what I wanna illustrate by changing these colors, by doing this conditional formatting is a little bit more obvious if I zoom out. We're, we're not too worried about the numbers involved in the data, but what I want you to look at is the number of the frequency of the red cells. So basically, if we're only investing in the stock market year by year, there's quite a few dark green cells, but there's also a fair number of pink and dark red cells. Those are down years. But let's look at this middle column. Notice if we invest on a five-year rolling attitude, basically if you're saying, I'm gonna invest for a minimum of five years, what are the odds that I'm gonna have a down year? Even over five-year periods, there's still some pink cells um, where we had some negative returns, losses basically. 
However, it is mostly white or green and even some dark green. So white is close to zero, by the way. Okay, well, that's pretty good. Now let's compare that to the third column. Now the third column is a 10 year rolling average. So with a 10 year rolling average, notice as I scroll through that not only is there not any red or pink to indicate negative returns, I don't even see any whites. There are some that are pretty close to white, but they're a really light green. Those are like two, 3% returns. Oh, oh, here we go. I stand corrected. There were some white ones down there in 2008. So in that big recession we had, um, uh, yeah, 10, 12, 14 years ago these days. So there were a couple whites in there, but they were still positive, but that was like 2008 rolling 10 year average was a 0.65% followed up by a 1.16%. So the point I wanna make is we can use this conditional formatting to give a nice visual overview of how many positive returns there are versus how many negative returns there are. And don't forget this third column, this one that looks the best, that's a 10 year rolling average indicating that we're gonna invest in the stock market for a minimum of 10 years. And if you keep it in there for a minimum of 10 years, based on historical data, it doesn't look like there's any previous 10 year period in history where we had a negative return. Hence, you wouldn't lose money if you stayed in for at least 10 years. Thanks for hanging out with me.